Welcome back. In our last video, we looked at building a deck of cards. In the video prior to that, we built actual card objects. The goal of this video is to talk about how can we visually display these cards onto a GUI or a graphical user interface. The goal of this video is not to be an in-depth understanding of how to use JavaFX. If you'd like a better understanding of JavaFX, I have a, a video series called JavaFX GUI Objects Using Scene Builder that will I'll give you a better understanding and walkthrough of how to build things in um, JavaFX. What we have or what we're going to be doing is something called a, a model view and controller or MVC architecture. The model is what we've already built. So this is our card class or our deck of card class. And then <clears throat> the view is an FXML file. It's not the same as HTML, but it's a similar kind of concept where the view itself doesn't have a lot of um, uh, controls in it. What it does though, is it's able to recognize actions and then it will send that information to a controller class, which is a regular Java class. And that class can decide what's the best thing to do. For example, um, maybe if someone pushes a button to deal a card, it will then contact the deck of cards class and ask that class to call the method to deal a, a card that would return a card object and the controller could then pass that card object to the view to display it. So we'll start off by building the view, then we'll build the controller. And as I said, we already have the models. So let's get right to it. Let's jump into IntelliJ and here we go. So to create the, uh, the view, the, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on SRC Right, so it's, I'm going to put it all in the same directory. You could build uh, separate directories for models and views and controllers, but I'm going to put them all into one. And what the view is, is something called an FXML file. And we need to give it a name. So I'm going to give it the name card view. You will see that it's a FXML file anyways, but personally, I like to add the word view in here. Um, Actually, maybe we'll call this the deck view. Um, <clears throat> but I like to put the word view in here so it's explicit that this is a view, not a controller or a model. And we will add that to GitHub, yes indeed. And what comes up is FXML. And you can see this is similar in style. It's, it's really, it's XML, um, but it's similar in style to um, HTML, where we've got tags, opening and closing tags, and information in between. The challenge here is that it's um, not so easy to visualize what it is we're looking at. So down at the bottom, we're looking at the text view. This is actually the text that's created. But we can also click on the tab called Scene Builder, and this is built right into IntelliJ. So Scene Builder comes up, and I'm just going to minimize this side window so we have a little more room to play with here. And what we have is, this is our default window. This anchor pane is the only thing that's defined here. And an anchor pane, as the name suggests, is when you put any kind of objects into this pane, it's like dropping an anchor for a boat. That's where they stay. So <clears throat> if I wanted to put something visual, like an image, onto the scene. I might drag this box and expand it. Maybe this will be my, you know, my deck of cards. And I can put it visually there. And maybe I want to build another one. So this is like uh, maybe viewing two different cards. I can just drag them in. Now, when you're adding objects to the view, if you just drag them in like this, um, it can work. <laughs> but the downside is that they actually have very limited control over their placement. I mean, it's all up to your eyeball. Personally, I don't do well with lining things up when I'm just dragging them around. So it's actually easier 
if you, um, I'm gonna select both of these by uh, hitting the shift key and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say wrap in, wrap in, and this H box, that's a horizontal box. So if I say wrap in H box, then both of these items are now perfectly positioned and I can control them. So I can, for example, I can tell um, this horizontal box, if I, if I go over to the right hand side to layout, if I wanna add some spaces in here, I can just go spacing and maybe I'll put in 20 little pixels of spacing. And now there's a little gap between these two items. Or I could um, add another item to our HBox. Maybe I'll add a button. So I can drag the button, can add it to the HBox. So you can see it created another cell for that button, spaced over 20. And we can now play with this a little bit too. So let's center it within this. There's our line. There we go. Let's center this. And it's not uh, playing nice for me right now. It's not centering where I want it to. So what I might do is I'm going to wrap this into something called a stack pane, which will position it perfectly in the middle. And if I select that button, I can say, rather than say button, I'm going to say next card. And we'll make the font a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. That looks nice. Okay. And our image views. So in order to interact with these, we need to give them a name, just like a variable in any other part of uh, coding. Or, you know, if your parents want to get your attention, they gave you a name. So the way that we do it is with something called the FX ID. So I select my object, go over to code, and I'm going to call this the, uh, the, the deck. Uh, deck image view. I like to be very explicit with the, the naming convention on my GUIs. So really this is the deck. And then this one I'm going to say is the active card image view. Now if I go back to text mode, you can see what it's done is it's actually built out um, all of this information, you can see there's my FX IDs are built in there now and the height and the width and everything's all nicely handled for us. So it's great using the scene builder because it's very visual. And if you want to go back to the text view, you can actually see things. Um, it makes your life a little easier. Now, the one thing is you can also see where there's errors. So right here, it says the FX controller equals deck view. So in IntelliJ, the default name for the controller is deck view. So let's go over here. So we've built out the view, we have our model, but we have not built a controller yet. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is in the same directory again, SRC, I'm gonna right click, new, dev class, and I'm gonna call this deck view but I'm going to call it controller because I like to be very explicit with uh, with my naming conventions. So over here, now if I start to type controller, it will autofill it in for me. So now the view, the FXML file, knows that this is the controller. And with controllers, they are um, <clears throat> a special class. And what we want to do is we want to have an initial state for our view. When it loads, in order to give it an initial state, we have to implement a special interface called initializable. So I'm going to say implements initializable. And what this does is the interface um, we will be covering this later in the course, but the idea of an interface is it's a set of rules that the class has to follow if it implements the interface. So if I look at this, it's telling me um, the class must either be declared to be abstract, which means I can't implement it, or it has to implement these abstract methods. 
So let's do that. I'm going to go to my light bulb and just say implement the methods. And you can see the initializable class has this method called initialize. So you say, OK. And what happens is this method is automatically run when the controller, when the, the view is launched. So in here, I can build a deck of cards. I can say deck of cards. Call it deck equals a new deck of cards. So now inside my controller, I have a deck of cards. And I have, let's go to our XML file. I have these IDs. And <clears throat> if I hold down Alt and hit Enter, I can uh, create this field in my controller. Now, I don't like it that it automatically makes it public. I'm going to say at XML private. And then what this does is it will actually allow <clears throat> this to be private within my class, but the fxml file can actually access it. And I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of the deck, I think I called it active image, or active card image view, is that right? Active card image view. Okay. So now I have these objects that I can interact with in my constructor. So what do I want to do? Well, the deck image view, I want to set the image. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say deck dot, <clears throat> and I need some kind of image in my deck, which we didn't set up when we created our deck of cards. So when we create our deck of cards, we said that there would be an image called the back of card image. And in my images file, where did I have it? I have this back of card by JPP. So we have a back of card PNG file that we can use uh, to load our card. So what we're going to do now is when we create the deck of cards, we need to set that image. So the way that I'm going to do that is in my constructor, I'm going to say the back of card image, back of card image equals new image, and then I have to point to the file. So if we look, it's in the same directory. Sorry, it starts in the same directory. We're in the SRC directory, and then we need to go into the images folder. So I'm going to say dot slash images slash, and then I can find my particular file, which is called back, oops, back of card. Uh, PNG. And I'm going to use that exact same line in my other constructor where we created the card objects. Now, <clears throat> now that we have this back of the card object or instance variable, we need to be able to actually access it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click, say generate, getter, I'll do getters and setters. Um, and I'll select all the items. And here we have now uh, both ways to access that image and uh, to get it returned. Okay, so let's go back to our controller now. And um, the in here, I can now ask my deck to give me the back of card image. So the, the deck image view will set the image to be the back of the card. So let's, let's now test that. Let's see how that works. So in my main, I have to do something a little bit 
different than before. So to create an application, I have to say that this class extends the application class. And that means that we also have some specific methods that we need to implement, specifically one called start. So I'm going to implement the method start. So now we can do um, we do launch args. This is uh, how the application class works. Again, if you want to know more about um, creating GUIs, watch the other video series on GUIs. Um, but here we, we call launch. That will go into the application class and it will do some work. And eventually it's going to come down to the start method. In the start method, what we have to do is create a parent object that will load our FXML file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say parent. That's the, the type of object we're going to create. I'll call it root equals. And there's something called an FXML loader. And we'll use that to load. And if we get the class and the resource, we can load, what did I call it? Deck view. XML. Okay, so now in the main method, we're going to load the deck view, right? So that loads the FXML file. And then based on that, we create the scene. So you can sort of think about it as uh, the scene in a play. Um, so if you go to Broadway, they have a stage, which is where the start method gets passed in. And then we create the scene on top of the stage. So we'll create the scene. <clears throat> and I'm just going to call it scene equals new scene. And we'll pass in this parent object to create the scene. So now we have a scene. And we are going to say our primary stage. Uh, let's see, set the title to be a deck of cards. And set the scene to be the scene that we've created. And show it. So at this point, fingers crossed, we should be able to load our scene. So let's give that a try. And our scene loaded, it showed up on my other screen. But uh, here we have the back of the deck of cards. And our button is there, but it's not really connected to anything. So the next step is we want to connect it so that when we push this button, it'll deal the top card off the deck and show it right beside it. So that will be in the next video.